This is Scott Becker with the Becker Private Equity Podcast. Today we've got seven stories for you, six or seven stories for you that we're covering, that we're watching closely. Let me start with, um, and we'll go through sort of inflation, corporate defaults, Novak Djokovic, uh, big companies by sales, big by market cap, and a lot more. So, so bear with me. The first thing is the consumer price index came out today and it rose a little bit more than expected in August. And this would seem like bad news for Fed fund rate watchers or Fed reserve rate watchers. But the, 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 the increase in inflation was mostly due to oil and energy prices up to about $90 a barrel. And that's good news for Fed watchers because core inflation itself slowed down some. So CPI, the CPI, which is the overriding number, went up on an annualized basis by 3.7%. And that's a bad number because it was 3.2% annualized in July. But the core index, when you strip out food and energy, slowed down to 4.3% annualized. And that's a good number. So stocks are responding to that well today with the understanding that the Fed may not raise rates at their September meeting. That's becoming an expectation. We'll see how that goes. The second story we're following today is about corporate defaults. Corporate defaults, those that are defaulting or on their debt, has risen to its highest level in, since 2009. And this is a very frightening number. And this goes to this point of there's only so much the Fed can raise rates in attempting to slow down inflation without wreaking tremendous havoc on the economy. There are just so many businesses, so many homeowners, so many people that have too much debt, including the United States, and if the cost of debt goes up too much, it just makes cash flow just impossible. You can do all the IBITDA calculations you want, but if you don't have cash flow and can't make your debt payments, it doesn't work. And finance costs have become so high that they're really starting to squeeze the companies, the government, and consumers. Again, as we say often, debt kills families, nations, and companies uh, this is a scary note that we're seeing the highest level of corporate defaults in, in nearly uh, 13 or 14 years or so. That's a scary, scary note. The third story also touches on what, what is going on with energy prices. The airlines are starting to be hit by energy prices. Again, crude oil prices up to about $90 a barrel, and that sort of is an indicator of all the energy prices, jet fuel and everything else. And you've got American Airlines, Spirit Airlines, and other airlines starting to cut their expectations of profits, and that's causing some dents as well. So you, you look at things that can really squeeze companies, energy prices being up and finance costs be, being up, cause tremendous havoc for companies. The fourth thing I'll talk about, I had the great pleasure of with Chloe and Liz and my nephew Jake and his fiance Rachel going to the U.S. Open Sunday in watching Novak Djokovic play against Daniel Medvedev. And what's amazing to watch in person, you know, and I'm a tennis player by background, by God, not a very good tennis player, but have coached some, have played some, and so forth. So you look at a player like Djokovic and you think, what can you learn from watching Novak Djokovic play? And, and I ultimately came away with the conclusion that he's such on a different level of player that it's almost like me looking at Michael Jordan and saying, what can I learn from watching Michael Jordan play basketball? And I almost come away with the conclusion that the real conclusion is almost absolutely nothing. They're just such a totally different being in terms of mental toughness, physical fitness, skill with the racket, that, that I almost look at it as though we're playing completely different sports at just obviously completely different levels. But what can I learn from it? Can I emulate his fitness by going gluten-free? Can I emulate his mental toughness by doing all the mindfulness things that he does? Can I, em em can I emulate his athletic talent? No. So it it's really challenging when you look at this and think, what inspiration can you take from it? You know, it's, it's at, at the very best, I, I could be a middle-aged player and a billion times less talent than him. And even if I did all the things he does and I can't, you know, in, in terms of fitness and mindset and everything else, which I'm just incapable of doing, quite frankly. I, I do come away with the conclusion, watching Novak Djokovic, they're playing a completely different game. It's almost like they're in outer space and I'm here, and they're at a totally different level. So what can I learn from it? I think almost nothing. 
The fifth story today is what are the five largest companies by market cap in the U.S.? And each of these have taken a bit of a dive in the market cap recently. But the top five are Apple, then Microsoft, Google Alphabet, which continues to print money, Amazon fourth, and Tesla fifth. Amazing what Elon Musk has done with Tesla. You could love him, you could hate him, but it's amazing what he has done. And then, then we've got the sixth largest companies by sales. And I always love watching these numbers. I think he gave a speech to the Denver Medical Study Group on, on healthcare trends. And what's fascinating to me is of the top six largest companies by sales in the U.S., two of those are huge payers. And I'll talk about that in a second. But the top six by market sales, by revenues in the U.S., Walmart number one, Amazon number two, ExxonMobil number three, Apple number four. And again, Apple's number four in revenues, but its profitability is so good that, and its prospects are so good, it's number one in market cap. Then fifth is United Health Group, and sixth is CBS Health, which of course are two of the big payers. United Health Group's gotten way ahead of the game in terms of being a huge provider network as well. Uh, and then CBS Health, uh, both a payer and a retail pharmacy, trying to figure out how to restructure itself currently. Not, not in default by any shape, doing great, but it's stocked down about 30% this year. In any event, those are uh, several of the stories we're following today. Inflation news, corporate default news, airlines taking it on the chin a little bit with fuel costs going up, Novak Djokovic just playing from a different level, the five largest companies by market cap, the six largest by revenues. Uh, thank you for listening to us today on the Becker Private Equity Podcast.